Hey guys, welcome to Stardust Gold Crochet. This is Tasha. So this week we're going to learn how to do Tunisian ribbing, which this is a stitch I came up with on accident. I was trying to do something else and then I ended up with this awesome ribbing, which was really cool. And you can use it for co koozies for water bottles or pretty much any kind of koozie or plant holder ribbing for sweaters. It has a really great um, stretch to it and it looks really cool when it stretches out so you can kind of see how easy it stretches and there wasn't any stitch out there like this so I even bought a couple books just to see if it was in the books and it wasn't so here we go let's do this get your double-ended Tunisian crochet hook either a 5.5 millimeter or a J hook which is six millimeter I used I love this cotton which I found at Hobby Lobby and it's called Brights, which has a really neat rainbow kind of ombre. For the tutorial, I'm gonna use this curry color, which is the yellow, but I'll list all the other colors in the blog post, which you can find the link down in the description. You will need a measuring tape and some scissors. And you can see you want to measure from the bottom of your whatever you want to wrap it around to the top. So these were ended up measuring about four and three quarters of an inch. So let's get started. Grab your hook and your main color, which I'm using canary for the main color. And we're going to do a slip stitch just like normal. And with Tunisian crochet, you kind of cast on your stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and chain about 20, which is what I used actually for these koozies. So if you want to make them the same size, you can chain 20 like I did. So for Tunisian crochet, you're going to insert your hook into each chain. You don't need to do 21 chains, just 20 and It'll be your final count. So insert your hook into the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. And you do that down the entire length of the chain. So insert your hook into the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. And this would be called casting on or your forward, this is called the forward pass for Tunisian crochet. So go ahead and do the rest. And here you see I've got my 20. So you count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And there's 20. So however many chains you create is exactly how many stitches you'll have. Now the difference between this stitch and many other Tunisian crochet stitches is we're not going to add our yarn on this side. We're going to actually turn it. So you're going to turn your hook and then you're going to slide all the stitches down to the other end and when you're ready you go ahead and you can add your contrasting color which in this case I used the prints you can use any ombre color or any solid so you yarn over and then you're gonna pull through the first vertical bar and then you're gonna chain one And then we're going to work the reverse pass for Tunisian crochet. So you yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. And you repeat that all the way until you reach the end of your other one. And this is actually considered one row. So the forward, the Tunisian crochet ribbing, it consists of one forward pass and one reverse pass. So here I'm at the end and that loop always gets a little loose so just tug on it. Then yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through the last two. You should have 20 vertical bars and the edging, that's what your stitch is gonna look like. The very right side vertical bars is called your edging and that's your edge stitch. So here you're going to go back, grab your main color, and let the contrasting color just fall down. 
behind it. And then you're going to insert your hook into the second vertical bar, not the first one. Yarn over and just pull up a loop and you're going to do a forward pass by inserting your hook into each vertical bar, pulling up a loop. All the way to the end, just like we did with the chain. And keep your tension pretty even. So here you can see sometimes the little stitches kind of hide. If they hide from you like that, just kind of push it in there and grab it anyway. And then we're coming up to the end here. And this is where you're going to go into the other edge, which is two loops. You want to go through the two loops on that edge. And then you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop just like before. There you go. So when you count your vertical bars here, you should have 20 vertical bars on your hook including the the blue one over there on the end. <laughs> so you're going to turn it and now we're going to work a reverse pass with the contrasting color. So with this stitch, you're always working the forward pass with your main color and you're always working the reverse pass with your contrasting color. So yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and keep repeating that until you reach the other side. And that's the complete pattern. That's what you'll be doing to create the entire ribbing stitch, which is really simple. So there you go. So all you do is you just keep repeating that until you reach the desired length that you want. And you'll be able to, um, you can make these as wide as you want, as long as you want, however you'd like it. And the written pattern will be on my blog, of course. Okay, so here we're going to join. And we're coming up to the end, so I'm going to yarn over and pull through two until I get to the last one loop on my hook. So there's that one. Then go ahead and tighten up your main color. And we're going to join the two sides together, but go ahead first and cut your contrasting color just to get it out of the way. There ends up being a lot of tails. Well, actually, there should be about four tails with this project, but sometimes they get a little twisted around. So to close off our main color row, we're going to go ahead, grab up the main color, and just do a slip stitch or a chain through the last stitch, and then pull it tight and then we're going to work with the main color to close it. This is reversible so either side it doesn't matter but just go into the very first visible bar that you see and then you're going to go straight into the back side for the first just go through one loop of the of the starting chain which that was our starting chain and then grab it and pull through, just do a slip stitch to close both sides. Oops. So go through the first vertical bar and then through the first stitch and then go ahead and pull through to close it. And then just repeat that all the way down. And of course, if you decide you'd like to sew this instead of um, close it up like this, you're more than welcome to. Either way will work fine. They both create a pretty clear, clean edge and a pretty invisible um, stitch. I tried it both ways actually. So just keep going through your vertical bar, go through one loop of the starting chain and then just yarn over and do a slip stitch through. So there you can see we've got a few. So 
just keep repeating that all the way until you close it and when you reach the end we're going to go through the edge stitch like we did before and then close it up by going through the main color over there that kind of gives the top edge of the closing a little bit of um, symmetry all right so let's see what this looks like you can go ahead and pull your either you can cut it and tie it off right now or just pull it out leave a long loop and then we're going to flip it inside out so you can see what the seam looks like and you can't really see it it's a little bit thicker than the other ones but like I said however you want to join this and close it is up to you and you can go ahead and test it on your cup or your water bottle or anything I use these cool 70s cups like aluminum they remind me of my childhood and it has a great stitch pattern to it it's a great ribbing stitch so Thank you guys for watching. Please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click on that little bell so you can get notified of future videos. And if you have a stitch pattern you need help with, let me know. I'd love to help you. Contact me. Thanks guys. Happy crocheting.